Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, please do subscribe and turn on notifications. So as you know, I recently went to Vietnam and did my first solo trip. I released that vlog just a few moments ago and I'll put the link up again if you want to check it out. But basically, I went to Vietnam because everyone was raving about the food there and I absolutely love Vietnamese food. So I have a lot of footage from what I ate and everything but unfortunately like it was just there was too much content to put into my same Vietnam vlog. So I decided to split the two and this one just focuses on the food and it was so amazing. So the different kind of things that I had over the five days was I had banh mi, I had egg coffee, I had restaurants twice when I was in a bigger group so rather than group the food based on like a diary day by day recap that I went and visited the food places, I decided instead I would group all the food types together. And I have to say apologies in advance for the wrong pronunciation. I am definitely not going to be saying them the right way, so sorry in advance, but hopefully it does make sense. So first up, I went to Ban Mi Huyen Hua, and this one was the really famous one that everyone lines up for. It opens, I think, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon up until 11 at night. It was quite nice. You could see that the meats were kind of cut really thick, and I think like the, the bun and the pate was really well done as well, so those are things I love. So the second place that I went was called Ban Mi 37 Nguyen Trai. So there was a little street food cart where they were cooking the meat on the side. It was really amazing to watch. And that one was a cooked meat one. So I traditionally eat the more um, cold meat ones. So it wasn't the first time that I had cooked meat ones. Like I've had cooked meat varieties in before, but not in Vietnam. I liked it, but I didn't love it. So I think it comes down to a preference of just preferring the cold cuts as well. So the next one was Ban Mi Bui the Suyen and this one was quite good as well like I was quite impressed with it and even from the few minutes that I was just standing there waiting for them to make my order you would have like lines of people like coming by the motorcycles stopping for like two minutes it was a whole drive-through thing even though we were literally kind of on the pavement so it, it kind of demonstrated the popularity and it's great because it opens until 1am as well so it was a good eat like to have as a midnight kind of snack but if I have to say my favorite absolute one, it would be Ban Mi Hong Ha. So this one <laughs> was the one I had on the way to airport on my last day and I was really silly because I put in the wrong address and then so the driver took me to the wrong place but it was worth being delayed for. This one was really nice, like they were very generous with their pate, the fillings were like kind of proportionate and everything and I think just the flavors together oh my gosh it was so good I can't even tell you like how good that one was but that one was definitely my favorite one and of course like if you wanted a more unique experience then I definitely also suggest going to Ban Mi Ho Ma so this one is more what I would call a deconstructed Ban Mi and this one is a breakfast place so you do have to be there quite early in the morning uh, in the morning there were people queuing up like right like all the while and I was really lucky to cut the line because it was just me and they just needed one person to feel like some seats in between but this one was a really fun experience just because you know they give you the bread they give you like the pate on the side and everything and then you kind of put the bits together but in terms of like I guess the meats it's not your traditional Vietnamese roll meats but rather maybe more cooked meats and everything but just sitting on the street was the best atmosphere ever and it didn't even feel too crowded like there was traffic and you would get motorcycles come by but it wasn't too constant that you felt like you know you were eating in that air as your breakfast instead. Then next up there was egg coffee. So as you saw I went twice both on Saturday and Sunday because I actually really really liked it. Like I love that kind of thick consistency and it probably isn't the healthiest drink to be having all the time which I do get and I think next time I do need to try Vietnamese coffee as well like just the more pure ones with the coconut oil or milk something like that. Um, but egg coffee was really fun just because it felt I love that kind of thick consistency and that was really yummy. So you would have essentially like two layers and the cups that they put them in didn't really show it well but you would have like a thicker more sweeter egg whitey layer and then below that would be the actual coffee part so you know you take a dip of the top one and then the bottom bit after that you mix it all together so you would have a more neutralized like not too sweet coffee but egg coffee you definitely must try also just because it's a specialty 
in Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam as well. Next up, broken rice. So I love broken rice and I don't know if it's because I also have a really bad craving for fish sauce, but as you saw, Kenny took me to this really nice place serving broken rice and the place wasn't exactly cheap for its standards, like around US $4 or $5, which is not cheap by Vietnamese food standards, but the pork chop was amazing. So it was like, it doesn't look like much, but it was really juicy and tender and it was just like the perfect kind of... It was the perfect kind of tenderness. I don't know how else to describe it, but it was really yum and it was really simple, but there were so many flavors. I love that we kind of had it with pickled uh, vegetables as well because I think in like Australia or like other places that we have it, you don't usually get it with that. It's just kind of with... Oh, actually, we do have it. Sorry, scrap that. We do have it, but it's a lot finer, whereas these were kind of more pickled pieces rather than strands of, like, like thinner strands kind of thing. But yeah, that pork chop was amazing. And I didn't even realize until we left the actual restaurant that they were the ones, like, standing outside fanning it. And it was just so cute to be able to see them, like, fan it straight in front of you and then give it to you. So that one you should definitely give a try as well. And then there was that time that we went to the restaurant called Hong Tea. So that was where we had the sliced pork dishes that we would wrap up in the rice paper rolls, put like a lot of herbs in, like we'd put mint, some kind of vermicelli as well. We would also put in some sauces as well, wrap it all up and eat it. So it kind of tastes like a summer roll, but I guess it was a bit different because they were sliced pork slices instead of like maybe prawns. That was a really yummy and kind of like it just felt healthy and that is what has found Vietnamese cuisine to really be like a lot of them like you know there's so much veggies and maybe steam boiled stuff not so much super fried stuff that actually the cuisine feels quite healthy and the other noodle soup I can't remember what this was called but for me it was quite different because again like you know usually we're used more to more used to like pho broken rice variety so it was really interesting being able to see like that soup noodle as well that was really yum as well and for restaurants so I tried out two restaurants when I had found other friends to eat with so the first place that we tried was Den Long and that place obviously did cater to a lot of tourists because there were a lot of tourists when we were in there including ourselves which was fine but oh my god those ribs were amazing like those ribs was it was just it was really good everything was actually really good I really love that restaurant and so it's it's a bit different like I think to some degree like the pineapple fried rice we had probably wasn't Vietnamese anymore but doesn't matter and then the second restaurant we went to was secret garden so secret garden the vibes the atmosphere is absolutely beautiful like from the lanterns just to the whole rooftop kind of atmosphere and because it takes like a it's like a hidden path you have to try and find to get to maybe that adds to the whole element I'm not sure but the food was really yum as well and we had so many amazing dishes and I really loved that lotus root dish that we had that was really good what else was really good the mm, everything maybe everything everything was really yum and finally I will round it up with the uh, my favorite so I found two amazing places one is traditional pho which was really really yum and I think the soup broth was just amazing and oh it was is really really good I I still miss it right now actually so maybe we need to hunt for some but other than that, I did try an alternative fusion pho, if you'll call it. So my friend actually recommended this place to me, and it's called Now Now. I think that's how you say it. But it was, we were attracted to it because it was bone marrow, basically. And me and my friend just have a religious obsession with bone marrow. So when we throw a pho, like, sorry. So when we saw bone marrow in pho, we just, like, have to try it. So anyways, I did a solo dinner there. It was really great. I had quite a lot of things that night, but the waitress was so nice that she kind of gave me like one portion servings instead. That crab and pomelo salad was amazing. Like, oh, I, I don't know. I, it was just so good. I really loved that. And then also, what else did I have? The tacos were quite yummy, but it was a Vietnamese taco instead. So they weren't obviously using taco shells. They were instead using like... um something else 
which I have mind blanked. And then the fur itself, like it was, I mean the portions were on the small side and I didn't really like my piece of bone because the marrow was really small but the flavor was amazing and it was really really yum. So if you are looking for something a bit more alternative and fusion-y, you can go to Now Now because it's really nice, the vibes, interior, beautiful. It is a very intimate setting so you can't have too many people there but the food, the flavors, very fresh, very yum. Give it a try if you're looking for something different and like just not street food. So overall, this sums up food you must try when you're here. I mean, I guess it really depends if you want to go for variety or if there's like certain foods that you want to try. There's still so much on the list that I missed out on, so I really have to go back and just keep exploring the foodie scene but I would say if you really were limited on time and everything the banh mi definitely go try the, both the deconstructed one and then maybe you can get the other one to go egg coffee you definitely have to try and that broken rice place and secret garden of course just because the vibes are so beautiful and it's it's fun it's fun being there and it's one of those like amazing nights that you will remember for a long long time so thank you guys for watching and if you want to check out the Vietnam vlog please do be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications and until next time see you guys bye negativity is getting closer how to keep the human it gets colder you know sometimes everything just gets hard